Hello everybody, welcome to Germany. I made it to Essen for Techno Classica for the first time as a guest of my friend here, Michael Lemke. He said I had to come, so I flew out and here we are. Let's go see what we can find. Have a look. Hall number one. Let's see what Techno Classica has in store for us this year. And look at all the Mercedes in front of me. Holy smokes. The Rosier stand here is just on fire. There's an incredible SLS GT3 and a Mercedes-Benz SSK. Wow, let's check out this SSK. Beautiful external exhaust in black. Wow, look at that. I love the radiator cover, the headlights. In detail, this car is perfect. So it says it's a 1929 Mercedes-Benz SSK. So a seven liter supercharged pre-war supercar oh and the combo here with that black 300 sl roadster garage perfection let's keep going in here at the rosier stand so we have a 2013 sls gt3 45th anniversary so this was a track day toy that's why there's two seats Look at that in there. What a cockpit. Huge wing on the back here. Wow. I think that SSK has to be one of the highlights for sure. The dashboards of these 300 SLs. I happen to know from my friends at Coachworks that this dashboard is all metal. You have to access, do all the work from underneath. A real pain to work on. Okay, we'll keep on going in, see what we can find. We've got another SLS. Love the red Alcantara dashboard treatment in here. 300 SL coupe on polished rudge wheels. On some wonderful heavy hitters. Ferrari 512 BB. Now I think I'm getting onto the Thiessen stand. Gorgeous BMW 507. You say Series 2. Alfa Romeo GTA. Nope. 1750 GTA, GTA M, sorry. With the big wide flares. Oh, what a nice looking piece that is. Old Mercedes Benz rally car, so a 300 SE rally. It's for sale right now for 158,000 euros. It's like a beautiful Porsche 911. Is it an RS? No, I don't think so. A standard two liter. Holy moly, 215,000 euros. And I'm pulling back here. And coming into view is an Aston Martin DB4 Series 5 Vantage Convertible. A very exclusive Aston Martin. One of a handful of cars. Oh no, it's on P4000s. Those are really old tires. <laughs> P4000s have all aged out. They have to be replaced. Let's have a look at the convertible here. The painted dashboard looks lovely. Wow. And yet another 300 SL. White with white rudge wheels. Just looks superb. Then we have a Porsche 904 Carrera GTS. This is the first of the fiberglass era Porsches that really finished off with the 917s. It's a works rally car, one of five works cars, chassis number 12, price on request. And these guys here are checking out this Bugatti type 37A Bugatti. Very original. Chassis number 3784. Wow. Well, what an epic start that is to haul one here. A Techno Classica. I have a feeling this is going to be a long one. There's eight halls of cars. 
and I am just loving the color on this Alfa Romeo 2600 touring body car. So 190,000 euros gets you this Alfa Romeo 2600. I nearly missed this pair of 190Es. This is the big evolution too, the one everybody wants for 295,000 euros next to a 190E Nürburgring. I don't know the story of this car. I don't think I've ever seen one before, but a very nice set of 190s here at Rossi. Well, if that wasn't enough, there's another whole area dedicated to Thiessen and Rossier. And front and center here is the DB6 Vantage Volante Paris Motor Show car. How incredible is this? Here's some of the information, some of the original purchase sheets. Wow. See the chassis and them are tagged there. Holy moly. So it's a Vantage spec. Volante with just the most amazing color scheme, this gray with dark green interior. Wow. The rear seats. And the split bumpers on the back here. So Brabus have got into classic restorations in a big way. They've been known for tuning modern Mercedes for quite some time and have used their talents to restore classic Mercedes Benz back to their original colors. And this cream on a dark green car is so splendid. Wow. Oh, that's a real winner right there. And they do all sorts of restorations here. I think these are th big 300s. And the interior that Brabus does on these is just amazing. Look at that. Wow. And here's another one. It says the big V8 in it. Let's have a look at the details here. Is that a million dollar restoration? All the CAD plating and the fits in the finishes? The battery in there. Holy smokes. So they even remake the chassis tag. Look, the precision involved here. Okay, so this is specifically a Mercedes-Benz 280 SE 3.5 Cabriolet. And it looks like it's for sale for 700,000 euros, everybody. Oh, wow. 700,000. And again with the interiors here. Such high quality work from Brabus. Look at the leathers. Wow. Amazing. Now this lineup is really impressive. Axel shoot this year. We have a 1965 275 GTB Ferrari short nose, matching numbers, Clashish, body off restoration by Roloff's Engineering. Next is a real heavy hitter, a 1951 Ferrari 340 America Berlinetta, so it has the big Lampredi engine in it. Holy smokes. Delivered new to Brussels, Belgium, 1951, exhibited at the 35th Brussels Motor Show. Look at the trim on there. This looks exceedingly original. You can see my reflection there. Wow, what a car.
Wow, axle shoot. We have a Mira 300 SL Roadster and an amazing 1961 Maserati 5000 GT with one of bodywork by Pininfarina. Wrapper on windscreen, stainless steel top, a one of 5000 GT. Wow. So just getting a rear view of this wonderful Maserati 5000. Really looks like a Ferrari from the rear. It, this car was delivered new to Fiat boss Gianni Agnelli. We can see the stainless roof. Now there is a sister car to this and it's built on the Ferrari platform. You can see in the interior there, the gauges and the chronometer. Very interesting accent trim running down the side of the car. Brandy wire wheels, of course. Two piece bumper with the cutout for the grill. This is a very unique Pininfarina shape. Dual front headlights. The windscreen is so wraparound. Look at the angle on that. And all the chrome trim. Everybody, this is a Pininfarina masterpiece. Look at that. Wow, this car. Holy smokes. Love the steering wheel in this 300 SL. Wow. HK Engineering with a quartet of 300 SLs. Oh, this white one here looks really amazing. Original interior, let's check it out. So it looks like it was a red interior that's been dyed black at some point. That's what an original wheel looks like, everybody. All these cracks and crazes. This is a real artifact. Even the key there. Holy moly, what a car. Original rubber. Wow. Reg wheel car. Oh, this gentleman's opening up the trunk. Let's have a look. <laughs> look at that in there. Wow. All well, the details like the struts here and the door trimming. Wow. And completely opposite spectrum, here's one fully restored and another one of these amazing steering wheels. Check this one out. This one's not polished. It looks more original maybe. Yeah, that's a neat piece. And very shiny engine bay. I'd say overdone. This engine's canted at a 45 degrees. It's the, basically the block from the saloon canted so it'll fit under this bonnet. See the foam they fit there for the radiator. Broad hour here, have a presence, a Techno Classica, wonderful array of sports cars. What I'm really drawn to is this 1989 Porsche 959 Comfort. And next to it is the 935 track day only toy with Jägermeister livery. Wow, this is so striking. 
So this is a 2018 track day toy, one of 77 made. Thiessen, more Thiessen. But we have some real big heavy hitters, including this 1937 540K Cabriolet A, two-tone dark green on light green. Wow. What happened with the chrome here in the window, but definitely some D lamb. Maybe very original. But look at the Maserati, a Fangio Maserati. It's a two seat configuration, cycled fendered sports car. I say cycle fendered because this could be fitted with cycle fenders and run as a sports car. There are very few of these in the world. This is, uh, I think, the A6 GCS. I'm not sure. And we have some nice Ferraris in behind there. But here we go, 1952 Jaguar C-Type. He says, one of only 53 built, of which 46 survive. Nice 275 GTS there. Got a Bentley blower, 4.5 liter blower. Let's see the, the blowers here have tags here. Sometimes they're stamped and numbered. This is the prototype of only 50 factory built four and a half liter supercharged examples for homologation. Fabric bodied, looking very original. The trimming in here. I love the complement of gauges on these pre war Bentleys. Wow. Oh man, this just keeps going. We'll have a look at some of those pre wars over there. We're pulling up on this Alfa Romeo 8C. I'm going to guess 2300. This is a Gatto bodywork. Let's see, what is it? 1932 8C 2300 Grand Sport. Wow. And the second 507 of the day. Beautiful metallic blue, but look at the finishes in the engine bay. This is spectacular. Well, that is a showpiece, excuse me. Whoa, that is so well done. My oh my. Oh, and this color of tan. Wow, this 507 really has my heart. So it's from 1957 and it's a series one. One of only 34 built of the rare series one. And I think it's something to do with this tonneau cover painted that makes it a series one, I'm not sure. So it was recently and extensively restored, delivered, delivered new in Germany, matching numbers, dark blue, dark blue metallic, original hardtop, rudge wheels, this is one of the best 507s I have ever seen. Holy. And if you're into 356 Carreras, this is the best. It's the Carrera Speedster. 765,000 euros. Beautiful cream color. Okay, what do we got here? Now I'm starting to guess. What is that, everybody? What is that? It's two-tone, I love it. it. Has It looks like glass or bodywork. I'm gonna guess Swiss. Holy moly, it's a stare. It's a stare. How Art Deco is that badge? So it's a stare 220 from 1939. It has a six cylinder, two liter, 55 horsepower engine on glass or bodywork. And we have two Mercedes here, and this one is so wild. It's the big 630K, it's massive. Two-tone, holy smokes. And I think I switched, this is Thomas Roof. Oh, what a Mercedes. So again, a six cylinder, but this is 6.2 liters and produces 100 horsepower. Okay, that was haul number one. Pretty impressive stuff. Let's try haul number two. 
two of eight. So what do we got in front of us here? Some wonderful horks. Look at this. So we got a hork massive four seat cabriolet from Old Timer Center, Osnabrück. Now here's an unusual um, brass era sports racer called a Hansa. Check that out, Ren Torpedo. Wow, look at that. What is this Hansa? Very cool. And two more horks here. What a rare sight to see. Three horks on one stand. Well done. Wow, this one's one massive limousine. Massive limousine. So it's a Hork 500B Cabriolet Glasser. Wow. Bosch Classic. Wow, look what's going on here with injection pumps being remade. Looks like the 300 injection pump right there. Wow. Really impressive stuff. It's so nice to get service for these kind of units. It's what keeps the classic car industry alive. The carburetors, fuel pumps, Wow. Yeah, I can't pass up an MG VA. This is the big imposing MG. And the MG Deutschland Club. Yeah, and it has this really cool dashboard, steering wheel. Wow. Big four seat MG. We don't see these in North America. Opal Club. What am I looking at here? 1971 Electro GT. Okay, so here we go. They were trying to electrify sports cars in 1971, everybody, with lead acid batteries. Look at that. The skirted fenders wow the text on the side okay so in the cabin here the driver is surrounded by an array of lead acid batteries that's insane what's the weight of that what an amazing opal <laughs> no taillights it must be a concept car I think this is cooling coils I think or resistors, I'm not sure. Wow, very original looking car. Cool comparison there with the concept car and a restored production version. Beautiful. Yeah, the Seinhausen Museum is one of the best in Germany and they brought out this amazing 710 SS. Wow, that is one large imposing car. Oh, look at that steering wheel, that looks original. German car lift, that sounds good to me. Look at the 190 Evolution there as well. AH 
Beach Spares here at Techno Classica. All the Austin Healy parts you'd ever want. And they make whole assemblies like this, whole bodies. They have a whole rear half of the Healy here, brand new, amazing. that wonderful these trunk floors always rust out we see new fenders here very nicely made and of course whatever Healy needs the new steering box is this CNC yeah, the brand new CNC steering box there it is If you need a radio rebuilt, look at this, people. Incredible amount of Becca Europas. Yes, and also the block. Yeah. Wow. Look how many radios they have back there. Awesome. Okay, he's, thank you. Uh, he's uh, the, have the biggest, uh, uh, how to say, magazine, lager, storage, storage in Europe. On to Hall 3, let's do it. I see a lot of Fords in front of me. A lot of Capri, so this is the Capri Club Deutschland. I do not know my Capris very well, but we can have a look at some of them here. So this is a Capri Mark II, two liter. Then we have a Capri Mark II, two liter V6. And wow, look at this. GTAM, so this is an American racing Capri. 24 hours of Le Mans history, is that right? Mark II, 2.8 liter. Wow, and some Ford GT40s. Back side of this Ford stand has some real fill in the blanks moments for me. I'm looking at an OSI 2.3 liter from 1968. It's quite a large car with a fastback design four seater, gorgeous alloy wheels, unusual mustard color, I'll say that. And then we have LMX. What is, what's an LMX? I'm not sure, I, but I do like what I see here. Let's see if I read the data plate. It's looking pretty original. It's a 1969 to seven, no, it's a 1974 LMX 2300 HS prototype. There's the badge there. Information on the back. Holy moly. Cog from Dusseldorf. This is a car I never see. It's a 1974-75 MG V8. And this is the most unusual color. Got the information here. 10,000 original kilometers, everybody. 40,000 euros matching numbers. Next to something which really has my heart here, XK150 Drophead Coupe. See the information here. So it's 100,000 euros. Let's have a look at the interior. So custom bucket seats. It's kind of fun. Oh, look at that steering wheel. Wow, that's a very nice steering wheel. Custom wood dashboard. So you're getting a lot of money here for 100,000 euros, I would say. Let's have a look at the pillar chrome. Camera's behaving. Looking pretty good. Passes the test. <laughs> Got TR4 here. Very nicely done for 43,000. Something I do not recognize. This is it a Saab? What do we have here? What is this? It's a Matra. Wow. So what are we looking at here? It's a Matra M530 for 54,000 pounds. 
Look at this mattress. It's a French car. Very 70s. Look at the rear. That's very unusual chrome trim. Cool Matra. Another rear look at that maroon XK150. It would cost double to restore a car like that. Wonderful Alfa Romeo 2600. Early 911S has the most impressive 911 display here at Techno Classica. We're looking, I guess, one car that they're currently restoring. It's a Turbo 3.6 X88 paint to sample car. Wow, look at that. See the engine work here and the detailing. Now, I'm gonna continue and go around this amazing ring of 911s they have presented for us today. And I definitely have to read some of the info sheets because I don't really know what I'm looking at. But right here is a 993 GT2 Le Mans race car. And beside it, I believe, is the road going homologation version. These are the cars that RWB copied. RWB is cutting and slapping on fender flares and they weren't the first to do it. Here is the factory fit Porsche. These are million dollar cars, everybody. See? just screwed on fender flares but it's the real deal really beautiful okay we'll keep going down the line got a 97 turbo s another and another turbo s geez this is going to be insane this lineup one owner 993 gt2 in white there it is rwb is just a poser these are the real deal we have paint a sample 930 turbo and a vibrant orange we have the 993 Turbo Show Car. So factory show car. 968 Turbo S Wysak package. Another, the Paris Show Car, 965 Turbo 3.6. This is really impressive. A Turbo S 3.3 prototype from 1991. And this must be a paint to sample orange color, right? 993 Turbo S 3.3 Gulf Orange. Okay, look, we're gonna keep going here. There's so many, I don't really wanna skip any of them there. There's a lot of good stuff here. An X33 Turbo 3.3 in mint color, 965 Porsche. Another 965 Turbo 3.3 new wagon with 570 kilometers from new. This is just another to show car, Six, 964 Turbo, number one show car. And really cool metallic purple. We have a slant nose here, 3.3 Turbo S, five speed from 1989. We have 3.3 Turbo Cabriolet, five speed. The Turbo Cabriolets were so rare, so expensive in their day. 3.3 Turbo S, five speed, the Coupe. 3.3 Turbo Targa, five speed. This is such a crazy color, 3.3 turbo Targa. Wow. Uh, 3.3 turbo coupe with 40,000 kilometers. And oh man, I've always wanted to see one of these BB turbo Targas. Look at the color scheme on that. Wow. And we'll keep going down the line. 3.3 turbo from 1977. A lot of 930s here, 3.0 turbo I don't know, this must be a paint to sample color. Another 930 turbo from 76, I'm gonna move faster. Uh, second 76, wow, look at the livery on this 75. Woo! 1975 turbo 3.0 and a Le Mans 3.0 turbo paint to sample show car. Wow. Can't skip this 962 Jägermeister car. Wow. Look at the paintwork in here. So shiny and wonderful.
Okay, guys, I found some more E30 M3s at MS. I can't pronounce that. I can't pronounce that. Sorry. MS Classic. Let's call it MS Classic. This is called an E30 M3 Sport version. Not sure. You can see the information here. So, 300,000 euros. I'd like to have a closer look at what makes that a 300,000 euro car. So, that's number two. If I pull back here, we have the 3.0 CSL Homage, which is pretty awesome. Wow, look at the livery on that. And then another, what they call E30 M3 Sport version in, in brilliant red for the same price. Maybe I can have a chat with these guys and see what they on, have on offer. I think these are like a restored version it must be. So yeah, this one's 305,000. It's about the same price. Frame off restoration. So these guys are doing frame off restorations of E30 M3s. Let's see if we can get a closer look. Do you upgrade them? Or the it's complete original. The car is original. Original specification? Yes. Wow, look at that everybody. A brand new E30 M3, isn't that amazing? Look at the plenium and the fits and the finishes, even the new AFM. Holy smokes, this is just blowing me away. Radiator, wiring, that's a lot of work. Yes. How many hours? Uh, 600 hours. 600 hours, everybody. Look at the finishes in here. Wow. Can I see your interior? Yes. Oh, let me get by here. It's complete brand new. So brand new interior. So fabric with Alcantara Sport yes. wheel. Yes. It's beautiful. It really is. Wonderful. Great work. So is, is the red car similar? It's the same car, yes. Oh, okay. It's all complete restoration. Yeah? Yes. How many cars do you have under restoration? Oh, we have many cars restoration. Really? Yes. yes. Wow. 50, 60 uh, M3 Sport Evolution. Only Sport Evolution. And another cars. Wow, that's amazing. I'd love to see your place sometime. Yeah, thank awesome. You. Thanks for thanks for sharing your car. Keep the thanks. good work up. Thank awesome. You. JB Car Design. So in front of me for 40,000 euros, they have this 968 CS Targa Club Sport. So a very top spec 968. I'm not sure it comes through. It has the red accents in the interior. Wow. That's a very rare beast. And then I think a 924 Carrera GT, a very rare car. They're selling for 130,000 euros. Wow, that's the first Carrera GT and the top spec 924. See information on it here. Oh, and the, and the sales invoice, that's nice to see. What else we got? Looks like a 930 Speedster. And in this dome here, a lot of good stuff. 200,000 for a 911 for a 3.0 Targa. Why 200,000? Maybe we'll find out when we go look at the engine bay here. What do we got? Oh, it looks fully restored. Look at that, so clean. So 3.0, 200 horsepower from 1976. And they're really showing off their engine bays today. $280,000 back date? Not sure. Kind of looks like a limited edition one of 28, like a 90 show car. Is that what was going on here? This is old tuning maybe? We got here a uh, 930 turbo, 200,000. Why is everything so expensive here? Holy hell, these Porsches are just 
insane prices. I think these are fully restored cars. That's what's going on. This is brand new interior in this one. Ready for the first drive, essentially. And this is a, a 911 3.2 coupe for 130,000. Wow. That it was JB Car Design. Okay, this is such a neat piece. It's an Arden XJ6, everybody. They call it the AJ4. So it's a fully tuned car. Love the wheels. Look at those Arden wheels. Wow. Well, here's the information here. So an Arden Jaguar AJ4. Pull back. Oh man, that is so neat looking. Arden AJ4. <laughs> it's a Daimler XG6. That's so wild. Okay, we got the Modicon stand. Very bright. This wonderful De Tomaso that's been restored. So it's a De Tomaso Pantera Lusso from 1973, 145,000. And then I would normally not share. We'll pull back. And I got a roof coming into view. 993. Well, 996, sorry. It's from 2003, 100,000 euros. Nice Porsche, and I have to move on because they're playing some music, but we have an E-Type here in a wonderful kind of greeny gunmetal. Looks like a custom. See what the price is here, 185,000. So fully redone E-Type. And I can't skip this. Have a look at this Countach, everybody. Wow, that is so spectacular. I'm gonna have to keep talking over the music and I don't wanna get a copyright strike, but let's have a look at the interior here. Look at that in there with the suede and the air conditioning. Very original looking car. Holy. RSW stand, Maserati Ghibli specialist. We'll start with this engine and transmission. Well, have a look at that. The headers are on display too, but really neat to see the restored V8. And look at the ancillaries and the brackets and the cooling. Holy moly, that's really impressive. Now I'm gonna pull back and we're gonna see a Maserati Ghibli Spider. There are only a handful of these in the world in this amazing copper color. Wow, look at the attention to detail here. Really neat to see that same engine fitted inside. I'm gonna pull back, canvas top, beautiful paint and body. Look at the body lines on that. Look how crisp that is. Just give it a nice sweep. Wow. Then we have a Ghibli under restoration here. So let's have a look inside the heart of the beast. I can see lots of sound deadening. And you see the wiring harness in there and the heater. Plenium done in fiberglass. Seems like a lot of work. Well, it's quite the wiring harness. And then moving on to the engine bay. See the cooling system all set up in here. It looks like it's just begging for that engine we saw earlier. Air conditioning car. Wow. Beautiful. And two more Ghiblis here. A set of coupes in the same color. Wow. Very well done. Some of the best Ghiblis I've ever seen. Wow. What a stand, RSW. Uh, Troy.
Troy Automotive. What's going on? This amazing Aston Martin Valkyrie in the craziest colors. I love that spec with that line down the side. That's really incredible. And on the absolute opposite end of the performance spectrum is this 120 fixed head coupe. Looking very, very clean. Maybe we can have a closer look at this. Look at the XK120 here. Very nicely done. I'd like to see in there. Wow, what a shape these XK120s are. Amazing. Look at the woodwork in there, everybody. I love this black with the green and the wood. What a successful design. Got these custom sills in here. A real beautiful high-end XK120 fixed tip. Look at all that woodwork. I think it's 12 pieces in total. Wow, what a showpiece. Also on offer, we have some awesome supercars. I think if I had to take anything off this stand, it would have to be this F40. Such a poster car for me. And I can't afford it, that's for sure. Beautiful 512 BB here as well in dark blue. Wow. Here we have the local Ferrari dealer with some really nice cars on sale. Here's a 355 F1 Spider for 189,000 euros. That's pretty expensive for a 355, but they guess they've gone up a lot in recent times. Schotnars for a 275, I believe, from 1965, 2.6 million euros. But the real highlight is this is Ferrari 340 Millimilia. How about that? And I don't think I've ever seen this one. It has very peculiar Vignale bodywork. They want 2.9 million euros for this. And it has so many weird details like the portholes underneath this trim line. Wow, what an amazing car. Got a 1952 Alfa Romeo 1900C. These 1900Cs are pretty unique because they were made for custom coachwork. It was one of the last Alfa Romeos really to feature and be designed for custom coachwork. This is a Touring Super Legera design. See the badge here? There's a tiny little Touring badge here above the Super Legera. I think that's kind of cute. As we go around here, we can notice all sorts of unique details like the cutout along the sill. I'm really appreciating the two-tone gray paintwork and the aluminum bumper on the back. That's just wonderful. Look at the three-piece aluminum bumper here with this beautiful Alfa Romeo badging. Wow, what a beauty. I love the, the lock strip for the window as well, kind of beaded. All right, hall number four. Am I going to even make it to hall number eight? I'm not sure, everybody, but I'm running around here as fast as I can. Okay, so oh, so this, I believe, is... Well, yeah, that guy's excited. Private sales. So, non-dealer sales. And I'm immediately attracted to this Intermechanica. Let's have a look. So Intermechanica was the Reissners. They started in Italy, then they moved to California. Working with Bizzarini, fiberglass specials with big V8 engines. Look at that. V8 sitting way back there. There's the Intermechanica book. I actually took that picture of that yellow car on there, believe it or not. Cool car. Can I see the interior? Look at that, everybody. How much? How much? Wow. Looks like very original interior. So I think they were trying to call it 
Intermechanica, Intermechanica, sorry, was trying to be renamed Torino at some point, I believe. That must be a very rare shift knob. See the gauges here? Wow, what a cool piece. There's no price listed. Very unusual crease here that runs down the fender. See that? Oh, there's the details right there. How much? It's right there. At least 100k. 100,000 euros, everybody. This Intermechanica could be yours. Wow, look, a second stayer. This is like Pebble Beach Concourse quality. Holy moly, what does it say here? It just, there's the contact information right there. But this thing has the most wonderful two-tone tan and burgundy paint scheme. Wow. There's the emblem mascot there. What a stunning show car. This is factory bodywork. And you look at the hot rodders, the modern hot rodders, they're trying to emulate all these lines that are really stolen from the pre-war period. Love the tire cover here. Interesting details going on. Wow, what a car. 50 years of the Golf. And there they are, the GTIs, German made GTIs. The ones that were made in Mexico had square headlights. I've always lusted after these grills with the red paint. This one looks really original. What do we got here? Some sort of uh, rally version. Yeah, these went from Alaska to Froiland. Very original looking. We have a Cabrio. Does this bring back memories? It, kind of high school memories for me. It's a Carmen. Oh, wow. So the Carmen version is even different. It has this roll hoop and the way the soft top works. Holy moly. Series 2 Golf, they call it the LD from 1979. Wonderful, that's a cool car. I've never seen this car in Gia. More uh, 1600 or 1300. Michael's checking out this Mark II. 40,000 euros. It could be yours. The 19, 1967. Steel wheels. We got the information here. It's a 3 4. Yeah, lots for sale here. You fancy a Chrysler in Germany? Whoa, 15,000 euros, holy. Here's a nice one, 1955 Aston Martin DB24, Broad Arrow private sales, 175,000 euros. Fifty-nine thousand euros will get you this Jaguar XJS that's been converted by Arden into the AJ6. Giveaway is these headlight pods, and of course the deep dish wheels. Has a very nice looking interior in there. Wow, what a neat piece! Hi guys. Hi. Can I see the interior? Of course. Oh, great. Thank you. 
So really going the Jaguar, oh sorry, the Aston Martin kind of route here with the piping. And they've got this special steering wheel on there. Wow. Looks like it started as a Jaguar Sport item that was modified by Arden. Gentlemen's gonna let us see under the hood. Holy, look at that. So this is what you call an engineer's car because all the plumbing's right on the top. Wow, that is a little overwhelming. <laughs> Hall number five. Let's do it. So first thing that comes in view is Dutch Gallery Aldering, the premier classic car dealer in the Netherlands. And we're showing off right here a 1950 Bentley. Speed 8 Le Mans. I'm not sure what I, is it a recreation or I think it's a rebodied 1950 chassis that looks like a blower Bentley. A Ford Capri. It's a 1973 2600 RS for 100,000. Can we give you a 300 S coupe for 335,000? Now, I kind of find this kind of funny that this is a vintage car. 1991 Diablo for 291,000. This is one of the first generation ones, I believe, that'll have the goofy instrument binnacle. Yeah, see that? Sticking way up there. <laughs> but yeah, first generation Diablo. Probably a good buy, actually. If there's anything that's gonna go up in value, it's probably this car. Uh, alloy bodied, XK120, 269,000. I love this Spiker C8 Laviolette LM85. LM85 is this custom paint scheme that Spiker took to Le Mans. That could be yours for 550,000 pounds. It never ends here. Have a look at this wonderful Lusso. For our 250 GT Lusso from 1963 for 1 1.7 million pounds. You know, when I started in the 2000s, these were $100,000 cars. And now you can add a zero. So pretty impressive price hike on those. Beautiful Alfa Romeo there. We have an outside bonnet lock, Jaguar E-Type Series 1. We'll have a look at under the hood of that for 205,000. Okay, here we go. This is what I want. 1992 Ferrari F40, no price listed. Oh man, the shape on these F40s. I cannot get enough of that. The wing, the design, whew, perfection. 4.7 liter Ghibli from 1970 for 269,000 euros. Uh, there's nothing cheap on this stand. Uh, Ferrari 250 GT short wheelbase, probably a road car from 1960. And I'm just walking in here. 1961 Aston Martin DB4, I love it in white. 1972 Griffo GL Series 2. So I think this has the big seven liter V8. That's why there's this pizza box intake on the hood. Very neat. See the emblem here, Bertone design. Beautiful sweeping fastback. Excuse me. That is very nice. And pulling back on a beautiful little Alfa Romeo. This stand is amazing. Lamborghini Countach 5000, Quattro Valvole. So this is the car that came right before the Anniversario, I believe. I do really enjoy this color scheme, red with light tan and white wheels. Yeah, I got the CD player in there. <laughs> That's awesome. You see specifically, this is a 1998 LP5000 QV for 689,000 pounds. Wow. Okay, let's have a look, a closer deep dive into this 1961 outside bonnet latch E-Type. I love the sand color with the tan interior very successful combo if you ask me and then we're gonna go in and have a look at this engine bay and it looks pretty impressive looks like the bonnet is welded 
to the upper shroud there. Got an aluminum radiator. So slate upgrades and modifications. I do see some early linkage. I don't think this is the correct um, water pipe here. It should dip down, I believe, right there. I think it's called a swan neck. Uh, questionable chassis tag. The stampings look kind of weird. Uh, but I like the bolts all in oxide. That's nice. Just scroll around here. Little buffer is an early feature. Hmm. Wow. This tan interior is just wonderful. Real bright steering wheel there. 200,000 euros. And some of the last cars here from Gallery Aldering is this wonderful Rosso Corsa for our 275 GTB for 2.15 million. This is probably the car I'd want to take the most. I just love these short nose 275 GTBs. And we have uh, Candy Apple Red, Jaguar fixed head coupe. I don't see the tag anywhere. Oh, here it is. 1964 3.8 for 170,000 euros. That's quite a bright color. Okay, this is a very cool looking stand. I don't know whose it is. Oh, it's a brand new electric vehicle. Look at that, by Ballo Automobiles. So is it a total recreation? I'm not sure. They say they can build this from 73,000 euros. That's interesting. Then they have an a, a Ferrari ASA. Look at that, these are extremely collectible. It's uh, from 1965. Here's some info here on it. Yeah, ASA was a very small firm in Italy that made these in coupe, I think, and in cabriolet roadster form using the Ferrari Dino engine. Bizzarini, I see on the back. So Bizzarini was involved. Now, if I scroll over here, we have a really beautiful car. It's a copy of the 540K streamlined coupe. It has a specific name, I can't remember, sorry, but I think this is a recreation of Arturo Keller's car, which won Pebble Beach about five years ago. The shape is so dramatic and wonderful. It's called the Autobahn Courier, that's right. I think the first one was built for the Shah of Iran. And then there's another one that was owned by Arturo Keller that was made. And what an amazing design that is. So we'll just continue down here, this Bellow stand. We have a Delage C02 from 1922. Unusual color scheme. And the last Bellow here, is it another electro electric creation? What is this? Yeah, it's another Electric Ballo, look at this. So I find this so unusual. It's pre-war design with electrification. Bring that up. Got an amazing Facel Vega in front of me from 1959. It's a prototype of the Facel 2 that was made two years later, but this prototype has so many unique and interesting details, like the bumper up here that's scalloped. Very, very interesting. What really caught my eye, though, is the roof line and all the chrome trim that's bespoke to this, this singular prototype. I would not want to have to refit that. Look inside here. I don't know my Facel Vegas that well to know what's different inside here. Pull back here, and again, it's the chrome that's really separating this car from the later Facel 2. Look at the bumper design, the way the exhaust and the bumperettes are in there. Wow, what an amazing car.
the gentleman here just corrected me. These aren't chrome pieces, they're all stainless steel. Even the bumper is stainless? Yes. Yeah, so the bumper here is uh, stainless steel as well. He was calling it inox. I guess that's the French term for it. So it's not chrome, but it's totally custom for this car. The kind gentleman from Sap and Classics is going to open the engine bay. Rear hinged. Wow, look at that. Holy smokes. Is it Chrysler? Chrysler V8? Chrysler. Yeah, yeah. 6.4. 6.4 liters, everybody. Wow. That's the chassis number there, A099. Wonderful, thank you. In there? Oh yeah, oh look at the fuel tank in there. Wow. Nicely trimmed. And also from Sapping Classic Racing is this 1961 OBL E-Type that was delivered new to Portugal. It is exceedingly original, and I just love some of the details in here, like the original aluminum console cover here. See the patina on there? And going into this engine bay here, it's really amazing. I think this is the original cylinder head. I can barely make out the R there. We have the original caps for the ignition system. We can look at the bottles here and the hydraulic system looking nice. Original leads, the original voltage regulator. Now some tangs are missing here, but you see the original harness with the black sleeves. That's really interesting. So it must have an alternator there and a generator housing. That's what's going on. Uh, what else can we say? Dipping into here, yeah, this is kind of the way they were with a lot of uh, heavy undercoat that was painted. This might have more than original. But yeah, very interesting car here with sap and racing. Um, let's go to the other side and get the chassis number. Yeah. So there it is right there. This is car number 202. See the original wiper motor in there. What's the date on that? One of 61. That's nice to see. And then if we just sneak in here, we can see the spot welds holding the bonnet to the, the sorry, the heater ducting to the sh outer shroud. Yeah, this car is really, really nice. I'm really impressed. They want 350,000 euros here today for this car, which makes it the most expensive for sale at Techno Classica. Another thing I really enjoy about this E-Type is the original chrome trim so we can see the door cap here with the slight relief on it for the two-piece door skin. Moving around, we got the top finisher piece with the small little screw, the original pillar chrome, little finisher piece leading to the thick piece of trim that goes all the way around. Very nice. Look at that. There it is at a storal. What an amazing piece. Just looking at German tools here with Michael. He's having trouble with his grease gun and I'm saying he should get this pointed tip on his grease gun. It really, really tucks in the ball bearing on the nipple. And this and is the one, gentleman, yep, a go new ahead. patent. And this is clamping on. So this is spreading open and then you release and, and it's a, tightening. And there's a nylon seal in there and then you can let go and it sits and you on press the nipple. With two hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never used this. I don't know if this is quite as effective as the point. It costs four times as much. If I was doing the job here, I'd buy both. But yeah, this is yeah. three euro. This is twenty as patented, and we will have to check it out.
Enjoying some of the automobilia here at Techno Classica. We got the Ghidor tool chest, complete with Ghidor tools. Wow, I'd love to take that home. Well, I was fancying a drink, but I think I want these hazard assistants even more. I can never find them in North America, and here's three just staring at me. Oh man, I want them all. Okay, I'm with Brooks Motors. These kind gentlemen have restored this incredible 1967 Innocenti Mini, and they've let me film it and walk around it. And it has a lot of unique details, right, gentlemen? Yes. The grill and the badge there on the hood. And, they're gonna and they restored this car completely, so let's see what they have under the hood. Wow, very nice. Okay, the horn's in here. That's, that's a curious thing. I don't think I've seen a horn in there like that. So this was an Italian-built Mini. Yes. Innocente. We go inside here. See, it has a unique steering wheel. I think the shells were shipped from England to Italy and then they were completely outfitted. I've never seen that before, I don't think. And to go on behind here, unique appointments like the license plate light, of course, the badging. Very rare to see one of these in Mark 1 form. Got some heavy hitting 80s cars here, including, I think this is a Koenig Special 512BB. They want 350,000 euros for her. So Koenig Specials was a pretty radical company that made this kit that went on here. Yeah, it is a Koenig Special. There's the information there. I'm at the DD Classic stand. Very cool intakes here that pop out. Uh, double wings, I guess you could say. Look at that rear wing on there. This is a car that's appreciated a lot in the last few years. Wow, look at the aggressive stance on that. It kind of gives it more Testarossa lines. Look at the size of the rear wheels. What are those, like 335s? Three, three uh, Pirelli P0, 345. Wow, and the deep dish BBS racing wheel. I am falling in love with this thing. Holy smokes. Wonderful. Next up, we have an Aston Martin V8 Vantage X-Pac Volante. That is one impressive Grand Tour. Got the interior here with the piping, the headrest, cushions. Oh, it's an automatic. Oh, that's too bad. Well, I'm really enjoying that. There's another V8 Vantage Volante. Here we go. Let's have a look at this. Really, really black shiny paint oh another slush box that's too bad uh, what do they say 200,000 euros it's a v8 volante series 2 with weber i love the spotlights very muscular almost american design to these which i really enjoy for a 288 gto this is if of all the ferrari supercars well no i take an f40 but this would be a close second, that's for sure. Love the split rims here. Wow. Beautiful. Just <laughs> Last up here is this Tickford Aston Martin DB241 of 33 that has the most unusual lines here, the coupe lines, kind of looking like a hard top. All the chrome is so wonderful. Two tones, so slightly different grays. See all the finishing done on here? I don't think I've ever seen one of these. Wow. Now we can have a look at the engine bay. So yeah, it's a 1957 Aston Martin DB4 Mark II Tickford Coupe. Body off restoration by DD Classics. So they do restorations at DD. You see the presentation here of their engine and the way they do their carburetors all painted up. Wow, 265,000 euros. Got the double pumper there. Washer fluid, vacuum operated diaphragm. I like the, the vacuum lines. See the chassis tag there. And of course it's a Tickford. 
I'll pull away we can see the overall lines of this car. Very cool, Aston Martin with DD Classics. So we have Old Timer Farm from Belgium, starting off with this 1929 6C 1750 Sport de Berti for 850,000 euros. Wow. Moving right along, 1935 Mercedes 170-6 for 300,000. Beautiful deep black paint. And then we're moving on to a Riley here, sports special called a Brooklyn's from 1930 for 185,000. Then a $425,000 512M from 95. Oh wow, there's something that catches my eye here. What is this big, it looks like a French car. What do we got here? Oh, it's an Austin. Oh wow, I've never seen one of these. Look how massive that is next to that Jaguar. What is that? Very French lines. Let's have a closer look, everybody. Looking very original. I'm gonna peek up here. Massive Austin. What is this? Is it a is it a royal car? Man, look at that. Let's scroll around. I'm just gonna read the sign first. It's a 1949 Austin Shear Line. Has a four liter. 127,000, no, 127 horsepower engine, sorry. Wow, Austin Shear Line. This is the biggest vintage Austin I've ever seen and really looking original. Look how many times that's been polished. Austin Shear Line. Okay, then some more maybe affordable jaguars we have a 1963 ots for 115,000. carmen red on black then what looks like a metallic silver gray coupe from 1965 for 140,000 euros nice alpines nice set there wonderful so from the old timer farm in belgium All right, what is this? What do we got, everybody? Is that a Riley? I love the two-tone fastback design. What do we got? Yep, it is a Riley. It's a 1936 12 Ford Kestrel from 1936. I think I saw one of these last at the British Motor Museum. And this is a large BMW saloon from the late 30s or 40s, I believe. What do we got? Yep, it's a 1939 BMW 335 Berlin. 130,000 euros. And a second BMW, another 335, same year 1939, but Cabriolet, 500,000 euros. So the open top version really ups the price. Look at that old school badge. Okay, moving right along, I'm at Gasman, and what really attracts me to their stand is this Hort Special Roadster. I don't really have much information. It's an 855 Glacier Special Roadster. This is like Pebble Beach Concours, best of show winning material right here, with a glasser body. Big imposing grill, and I love the way that the fenders are kind of nestled and shaped around it. 
The bumper irons are running right through them. Really well executed. Massive grill. What a roadster. Wow, I am falling in love with this. What a car. So next up is a 1969 Isogrifo 7 liter with the pizza box intake there. Price on request, bright, vibrant yellow. I wanna have another look at this special Roadster though. Split bumper design. I love the way that the spare tire is integrated. Very original looking hubcap here. Wow, look at the dashboard here. Beautiful. Beautiful. Fourth pork we've seen here in Germany today. Look at this. This is like Mercedes-Benz special roadster with the way that the chrome's all done. Spotlight's done in there. Wow. This chrome work, I, do, I would not want to restore this car and refit this all. It's such fragile trim. Again, over the fender here, more fragile trim. Beautiful. We got some nice British stuff here. Looks like a 150 Roadster S specification from 1961. No price listed. No price listed for this 502 Cabriolet either. And then we have a 327, 328 Coupe coming into view as well in wonderful two-tone. Nice set of BMWs there. Finishing off with a 328 Roadster. Actually, no, it just keeps going. Then we have the 319-1 Roadster from 1935. And yeah, the one I want, 507 Series 2 from 59. What a great display of BMWs that is at Gasman. Okay, what else we got here? What else we got? What is this? Uh, I think it's somebody's special build. Oh, it's a Bentley. They call it the... Peterson Racer, six and a half liter from 53. Look at the bodywork on the front here. Wow. It's road legal. Could you imagine seeing this pulling up behind you? Holy smokes. The cowling on here is wild. It's a wild one of creation. Dreamed up by somebody. It's a work of art, I would say. The way it's all fastened down. Wow. Well done, very well executed. Normally I'm not into these kind of pre-war special cars, but there's something about the proportions and shape of this one I'm really enjoying today. So it actually is a cycle fender car and you can see the bodywork is scalloped and clearanced for the turning radius. And this is really celebrating this turbo, the supercharger up front. Wow. Okay, here we go. Land Delay Pullman Mercedes 600. That is one rare bird. That's a million dollar car. Land Delay. Land Delay. Yeah, yeah. Let's go have a look at this Land Delay. Wow. Look at the space in here. Very, very exclusive and wonderful 600. The most desirable of all the body styles. Hootkampf collection, starting off with this 1953 DB24 Mark I that was registered in the 1954 Mille Amelia. There's the start time, five o'clock, 5.44 in the morning. That's really amazing, look at that. So there's the original driver in 1954 and the continuation. Wow, that is one very desirable Aston Martin. I love the dove gray on dark red burgundy interior. Wonderful. And coming to view, 
I'm hard pressed. Is it a Lancia? It has very unusual and awkward lines. No, it's a 1948 Fiat 1100 Sport Gabon. Gabon. 500,000 euros for another Millimilia entrant. How about that? Wow, look at the front grill on that. Oh, hey guy, it's my buddy Dirk. How's it going, man? I'm having fun. What are you doing here? I live close by. Are you buying some cars? <laughs> no, neither am I. Good you're to see across, you. You're across the globe, you idiot. <laughs> I got a call, hold on, hold on. Okay, before Dirk rudely interrupted me, I want to check out this Lancia. It's a 1955 Aurelia B10 for 540,000 euros. It's already sold on the on the uh, preview day. Then I'm looking at a Fiat there with Millimilia livery. This stand just keeps on giving. Let's just sneak around these guys. <laughs> and we have a Riley here, Sprite 12-4 for 350,000 euros. Healy Silverstone, 245, and I'm really attracted to this Chiss Italia from 1951, 190,000 euros. That is a little Italian jewel. Oh, I see Bakelite, I see Bakelite, everybody. Look at that steering wheel. Oh, and the knobs, this car is so wonderful. Love the livery on it. Wow, what an amazing Chiss Italia. Continuing down the line here. Yeah, I'm skipping over the 275 because there's this amazing Maserati. This is the first series A6G, I believe. In a beautiful color scheme, dark blue and burgundy. Love these uh, steel and aluminum combination wheels. You see the burgundy interior here, the corded steering wheel. Wow. So it's a Farina designed 1949 Maserati A6 1500 Pin and Farina for 550,000 euros. It's such an elegant Maserati. And this really fueled Maserati. It turned into the A6 G2000 and some of the best post war Maseratis of all time. Love the cowl here around the headlight. Beauty. Okay, let's have a look. They have a 275 GTB. I have to have a look, right? So it's a 66 275 GTB price on request. Looks very nicely done. When I start to look at the chrome all the way around. Wow. Continue at Hoop Camp from Amsterdam. This very early 1951 Aston Martin DB2, also known as a first sanction. It has this very unusual grill treatment, 300,000 euros. It can be yours today. Pulling back on a 1959 Alfa Romeo 2000 Spider for 170,000 euros. Beautiful, pin is it Pininfarina detailing? I think it is. And here's something that has my heart. 1959 AC Ace Bristol for 400,000 euros. Well, maybe they'll let us see under the hood of this thing. Let's see. Beautiful, thank you. You're more than welcome, more than welcome. Having a look at the Bristol engine in here. It's a Bristol aircraft engine based on a BMW design. It's dual overhead rocker, I'll put it that way. It has a single camshaft that runs down in the block there. And then there's a rod which sends the motion over to the other side. Those are magnesium covers. This is a very exotic engine. I just love them so much. the back side of this first sanction car you can really see the difference between the later production cars there's no hatch a really small little window in the back there's no real bumper just trim back here 
So we have an opportunity here to look at the engine bay. Okay, everybody, how much is this Mini? Looks like a late model Mini, what do you think? Okay, enough with the guesses. It's 75,000 euros. It's a limited edition Radford from 1975. So let's go see what we got here. So I can see the Radford badge on the hood. There's the information there. Just 10,000 miles, two examples built. Oh, okay, so now I see we have special wheels here. And inside, this is where the Radfords really shine, this like kind of Aston Martin inspired interior with the full wood package. Look at the gauges in there. Wow. And you've got the old tape deck in there. Radford Mini DeVille. I can't skip over an early Ferrari, and this is a 1950-195S Inter with Ghia bodywork, coupe design, fastback coupe design, really <laughs> wonderful details like the, the strip running down the sill of the car, and it is a jewel. Look at the interior here. Look at that wheel. Holy moly. This is automotive art. So much rolling sculpture everywhere I go here at Techno Classica. I am blown away. Okay, completely untouched Aston Martin DB5, 30,000 original miles, triple black. When you get up close, you can see the crazing that's happened. I think this is what happens to lacquer. But that's extreme lacquer cracking. Wow. So this is an unlabeled stand, but I'm really enjoying the cars. There's a very original looking XK 120 Roadster. Look, it seems like all original interior. This is kind of blowing me away. And it's a, oh sorry, it's an XK 140, totally original with 21,000 miles for 125,000 euros. Is this original paint? See, this is the right way that these uh, repeaters go. Uh, often I get in a lot of arguments with people about this. They say I put them in wrong, but definitely goes, it definitely slants this way. Here's an original car. There's the proof right there, everybody. Beautiful XK140. I should have recognized that by the big bumpers. All original, wow. You know, on the opposite end of the spectrum is this XK140 drop head. Completely restored. Beautiful, beautiful dark gray with black interior, gorgeous woodwork. I'm a huge fan of these, exceedingly hard to restore. Yours for 125,000 euros. It's a 1956, fully matching, original leather, original Swiss car. Okay, let's have a look at this original leather. Well, wow, that has really held up quite well, especially for 64,000 miles. It's amazing how well leather does hold up. Beautiful.
was this historic race. Look at this bodywork. What is going on here? What is that? Wow. Well, that's a beautiful starting point. Gigi plate. I have no idea what I'm looking at. Steering wheels in there. Oh, look at the fuel tank right beside the driver. Wow. So that's a recreation of the motor, beautifully made. Wow. Historic race. And a beautiful Maserati race car here. And I adore this engine. Look at that six cylinder, supercharged, 6C they call it. Wonderful. <laughs> wow. Jim Stokes here brought this absolutely amazing 8C2900 Zagato Spider. Wow. The louvers there. What a beautiful piece that is. in there. Little bucket seats. Amazing. So Michael, do you want a brand new AC2900 engine? That's the most one of the most legendary engines ever made, completely remanufactured by Jim Stokes. How sophisticated is that? Sorry? It's all air cooled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful aluminum um, intake manifold there and supercharger system. You can see the drive here for I think the water pump, is that right? Is that for the water pump? Yeah, and you yeah, the, the water tank, channels yeah, the there. Channel. Yeah. Beautiful. It's a work of art. Is that a new one? Brand new. Brand new. Isn't that amazing? Ten. <laughs> How much are they? Deep breath. 165,000 pounds, everybody. But it is a piece of art. I mean, the it is, right, eh? Is, uh... Wonderful steering wheels here, and we found an original old Nardi E-Type steering wheel for sale today, 2,500 euros. Okay, I think I have half an hour left of this preview day, and I've only made it to haul number six. But whatever, I'm just trying the best I can here. It's pretty overwhelming, 1,250 vendors. This is the result, just hauls and hauls of wonderful cars. Okay, here's the local BMW club showing up with the best BMW of all time, the M1. Beautiful dark blue color. We have a Z8 safety car. That's pretty wild. So it's a BMW safety car for MotoGP from 1999, still with the lights. And this, this is such an unusual thing, an E36 M3 compact. So it had a shortened kind of hatchback look on a three series. Looks like it had carbon Kevlar seats in there as well. So M3 compact created and presented an entry level model to the world of the BMW M vehicles, all right. 
And we have some nice E30s here. Cutting through, oh no, oh yeah, no, cutting through. I'm gonna cut through. What else we got here? 850 CSI, 525i Touring. We do not see a lot of these Touring versions in North America. Now there, now we're getting hot. Alpina B7 Turbo. Love the graphics on these. Keep on going and wow, this 3.0 CSL in this, I don't know what how to describe that. It's a greeny blue metallic. Wonderful, wonderful car. This is, it'd be hard to, I would, I think, yeah, I'd take this over the M1. It's, I just really am in love with these CSLs. That is so wonderful. Beautiful color. And another 3.0 CS. So, oh, automatic. Wow, CS automatic. 3.3 3, 3 L. I'm is this a South African special? I'm not sure. And oh yeah, we'll end with this Alpina tour. So it's a Alpina B10 3.0 Allrad. What's Allrad I mean? Again with the graphics down the side. And there's a match card to it, the B7 Turbo. Three wonderful Alpinas here on this stand. Very nice. Okay, we got some wonderful Jensen's here on display. We got this Interceptor. But what really has my eye is this, I think it's a 531, no, 541R. This is a fiberglass car, very well restored. Jensen 541R from 1958, four liter, six cylinder. Wow, that's so unusual. And I keep pulling back. We have a Jensen Healy shooting brake. I don't think I've ever seen one. I've never been a fan of the big rubber bumpers on these. XK120 fixed head on white. Seen a couple of these today. So this is 30679 from 1952. Original pastel green with suede green interior. Still has a green interior. Does it have a price? And there's a second XK120 coupe next to it in black. What else we got? Maserati by Turbo, I believe. And I think this is called the Indy. Got V8 in there. I think that's similar to the Ghibli V8. Yeah, it was an Indy. 4.9 liter V8. May as well keep going. I think we have a second Indy here. Uh, I think that's an Indy. Yep, I do like these wheels a little more. There's the original build sheet, sales invoice. Very impressive.
hier an der Stütze. Ne? Hier auch einer. Weil das könnte schon wieder mit der... That is one amazing dish of all. Wow. So what are we looking at? Is that the information for it? Yes, it's information. There it is. 2CV number four? Seven. Number seven. So emerging trends here. All these cars that we're looking at are restored in Poland. Yes, so what is it called? Sports, classic and exotic cars, Poland. So here's a Jaguar E-Type, fully restored in Poland. It's nicely done. Huh, look at the gear shift lever, it's poking way up. Beautiful paint. It's such a resale color now to do gunmetal on red. All right, I'm making my way, hall number seven. Let's keep going, everybody. It's kind of slowing down. It's about 7.30 on preview night, closes at eight. And what do we have in front of us? Look at that BMW glass. This is something you have to come to Germany to see. Wow, look at that. See the advertisement there. So it's a 1600 GT. I think it's made by glass. I'm, I'm not sure. And then we have this really mammoth Alfa Romeo. I don't think I've ever seen an Alfa Romeo this large in, from this period. It's a Farina design. I'm going to guess it's a 6C, 2500 or 2600. Berlin, very unusual. A lot of these cars would get, the body would be taken off and a sports racing car body would be put back on. And may as well look at the little Fiat Abart as well. This is the old car stand, old car, old car car24.com Selected car group another CSL this one's 240,000 euros in bright electric orange have a look at that engine bay the interior velour seats And then we have XJ220. Um, I, this is kind of neat. I think they're doing some work on it. I love these pads they have to protect the fenders. Beautifully made. That's such a wonderful idea for working on these cars. And no engine. Hopefully it's not going electric. <laughs> Looks like a 930 turbo. No, sorry, 964 turbo 3.6 for 400,000 pounds. 400,000 euros, sorry. Beautiful color on this. As if we haven't seen enough of these. <laughs> okay, oh, I missed it. I completely missed it. There's the back half of the XJ220. The turbocharged six cylinder. This replaced the V12 that the car was supposed to have when everybody was ordering them. Oh, it's for sale like this. That's a really unusual way, way to sell. An XJ220. Also on the stand is our third outside bonnet latch E-Type. Look at that. White with a red interior. Really enjoy that color combination. It has the right door caps with a little scallop in there. And we'll have a look inside here. We have the early linkage. I really do enjoy this hue of orange. Uh, oh wow, this is gold. This is gold everybody. Have a look down here. So we have the original chassis tag. This is car 875247 
but it's a JTAG car. So this is an original California delivery car. And those are some of the very best in the world. They're totally rust free. It just generally does not rain in California. Have a look at some of the bodywork here. You can see that it's spot welded to the shroud, I hope. There's the number there. Somebody's drawn it in. Looks like zinc plating on the suspension and uh, pretty rough work in here, like with this heavy, heavy undercoater, but that's the way they were actually. That's the way Jaguar put them together. Zinc coating on the hinge, I'm sorry, the hood prop. Um, yeah, nicely done car. So what we can see here is they want 270,000 for it. And there's all the information there. Now, one thing I'll add to is that my friend Michael Lemke and me went around and we did a video on all the E-types here at Techno Classica. I'll put a link in the description below, but we were exhaustive. We went over each one, no matter what specification it was, really searched in and out of the cars to really give a good indication of what was here, how much it was. And uh, yeah, as I said, again, I'll put the link in the description. Oh, I like to see their, the right helmets here on the battery, little buffers. Yeah, pretty nicely presented car, I have to say. Very new looking. And it's right next to a Series 2 Roadster for 90,000 euros. I almost forgot to take a look at this Mercedes Transporter. It's beautiful. Not sure what this stand is, but they have some really impressive cars. We have a Mercedes 320 Cabriolet A, brown on tan. Lamborghini Islero S from 1961 for 480,000 euros. If I gently scroll around, we have a Ferrari 250 GTE. Uh, they do not have a price on it. Keep going, that looks like a Mercedes 300 S Cabriolet maybe. Uh, yes. 300S coupe, sorry. It looks like a cabriolet, with, looks like a hard top design, but it's actually a coupe for 310,000 euros. I'm gonna keep pulling back here. We have a 1934 380K compressor for 1.1 million. Okay, 1.1 million, let's have a look. So going into detail here, we have some really nice headlights, Bosch headlights. It's actually a two-tone, it's blue, kind of a uh, seafoam blue, <coughs> sorry. With, um, with a metallic light green combo. Look at the interior in there. It's definitely a big cabriolet. Look at this soft top in there. Wow. And I'll keep moving around and we have another huge imposing Mercedes Cabriolet four seater. Wow, looking very original. So what is this? It's a 540K compressor from 1937, 1.15 million euros. Ah, and our fourth Jaguar E-Type. OBL, look at that. Yeah, and it's probably the best one of the lot that we've seen so far. Looking in here, it's very, very original. It has the right water intake. It kind of ducks down there. It looks so clean. Like, the, the chassis tank is perfect. Uh, fuel filter, we can see black oxide on the bolts very well done I think this would be my pick if I was taking one of these e-takes home so neat to see four outside bonnet latch cars at one show wow beautiful Carmen red on black that's a good combo and the early cars here we can see they have a black can this actually looks like the original hammer tone here on the intake plenium wow I'm too curious let's go on the other side So here we are on the driver's side. Oh yeah, original hydraulics with tags. That's extremely rare. Beautiful, beautiful car. Yeah, I'm in love with this one. There's the information there, 259,000 euros.
Lamborghini P400 Super Leggero. Okay, okay. This is what I'm looking at, everybody. That is one gorgeous Mira. Wow. Red with the gold sills and the gold wheels. That is just so perfect. Klima Lounge. So Klima Lounge here have really gone the distance. We have this wonderful Mira. I don't know what the Super Leggera is. What is this? What is a Super Leggera Mira? I'm not sure. Okay, okay. And next to it is a sea of Lamborghini tractors. Are you a Lamborghini tractor enthusiast? Because if you are, you're in luck. I'm gonna feature them. So this one's so cool. Look into this with the tracks. It's a 42,000 euro Lamborghini 5 CTL. We're doing tractors. It's a tractor show today. We have a DL30C Lamborghini tractor for 44,000 euros. Does it come with the champagne? Uh, another big Lamborghini tractor here. A one CTL for 38,500 euros. How do you price these things? They're sold, that's sold, it's gone. Our, a preview day, it's already sold. Then I'll whip around here and we have a Lamborghini One RDT Allrad for 44,500 euros that's sold. And this one's sold as well. It's a Lamborghini One R. Get the information there. It sold for 28,000. Wow, really well restored. Smell the rubber, this new rubber. Wow. I spotted something I really do enjoy from the Aston workshop. Oh yes, another special bodied British car I've never seen. This is the 1954 Aston Martin DB24 Vignale. Yes, this is such unusual and interesting styling features that only really I saw on the Ferraris. See the grill there with the crosses? Has an unusual hood with an intake in there. See that? And as I move to the side here, we got the chromed louvers with the accent line. And now this canopy is straight out of the books for what Vignale did for some for some Ferrari customs with the wraparound windscreen. And holy moly, look at the dashboard in there with that chrome trim that runs around the top. And again, more chrome louvers. And unlike the Ferraris, they turned the Aston Martin into a hatchback design. Oh, wow, I'm really enjoying this. Got the unusual Vignale scalloped lights, but look at that, that's one piece chrome that has to be fit straight to the paint. So this is really, really tricky assembly to get right. Getting that to nestle in on the paint all the way around. Got some trophies in there, so it's an award winner. Very, very Italian lines. There's not much Aston Martin in here besides that, uh, besides the, the, the Speedo cluster. Kind of a bench seat on the front, very wide. And the chrome trim here, and this is another Vignale touch where the quarter light, quarter window, is kind of sucked into the car and it leaves this, this channel here, which is actually the um, gutter rail. See that? Very unusual Vignale touch that's only seen on a few cars. And again, so we have the beautiful aluminum trim going all the way around this wrapper and windscreen and a second piece of chrome. This is Italian artistry at its best. It is so wonderful. I'm so glad I came to Techno Classica today. Look at that. Oh man, so, so wonderful. Okay. So Aston Martin Workshop are known for their aluminum work. 
And here they are, they've made a Zagato recreation. They have done several of the original Zagato cars. 1.5 million pounds for the recreation today. And this will be one of the closest recreations of an Aston Martin DB4Z you'll ever see. Oh, got the engine here on the stand. That is a beautiful stand. I definitely want to copy this design for an E-Type stand. It's a super flow and it's on a cart with wheels. This is the way to do it, everybody. they got the mount there. So the triple Webers with the air box, that's DB4 GT specification. This is probably punched out to four liters or more. Oh man, it's all new construction and it's beautiful. So this is the twin spark ignition system. So we can see the dual distributors. These are one, two, three electronic distributors running into the twin spark cylinder head. Mamma mia, this is incredible. Okay, now look at the finishing here. So it's been rolled on the wheel and then finished. The gaps are perfect. <laughs> wow. The dashboard and the way it's integrated, I wouldn't want to have to do the wiring up and in there. Move around to the rear here, you see the trunk. Wow. Very, very nice stuff from the Aston Workshop. Beautiful. Oh, and they got the engines here too. Have a look at these reman cylinders, cylinder blocks. Wow. So you can see that groove where the liners would go down and seat in there. Beautiful construction. Six cylinder engine blocks, machined in-house to exacting tolerances, an amalgamation of over three years development, cast in the UK by world's leading foundries. Okay, so here's why. Look, you see the top here, you get this corrosion. And this is the end of this block. You see the cracks in between the cylinders and how corroded these water jackets gets. This is why I like to use Evans coolant so you don't get acidic water co coolant ruining engine blocks like this. Now, so there it is, the before and the after. Well done, well done. Really nice shapes here at Automobilia Racing and Exotic Cars. We have this aluminum lightweight inspired E-Type for sale. Matching numbers and road legal, they say. Then at Ferrari BB 512 Group 4. And this Kellison J4 Racing Prototype. Look at that. So it's a fiberglass special. These were made, I believe, in the United States. This one is looking very cool with the hubcaps. You can see the Kellison badge here, or sticker on the car. Little wind deflectors here. Oh wow, look, is that is that oh those is that old racing history? Is that real? I'm not sure. Laguna Seca, so it's definitely American. Very basic. I, I'm, I'm, some of these Kellisons were built up from bodies and some of them were sold as running cars. It's been showing its age a bit. Not sure. It's a beautiful, beautiful shape though. I do really enjoy that. Then the group four, 512. So this has widened flares, competition engine. Is it road legal? That's pretty sweet. That's wild. And the E-type here with the riveted on panels, kind of stuck on aluminum doors. And it's kind of tastefully done right. They left the flanges here, which I enjoy, and then painted all this, all this steel a silver color. So really highly developed E-type. Interior there, you can see the original shift knob, that's pretty cool. Bucket seats, roll cage of course, ready to hit the track. Really enjoying this aluminum hardtop as well. What a wild E-Type. So this is new to me. It's a 328 Cabriolet Alton Reef. It has the 
the soft top frame there sticking way up. See the coach builder tag here. Walking reef. Wow, really nice. Gorgeous. Really enjoying this 635 by Alpina. It's called a B7. I've never seen one before and it's so striking here in white with the way the graphics run down the side of the car. Got the Alpina wheels, of course. We have information here. It's yours for 165,000 euros, a 1981 B7 turbo with 163,000 kilometers. Okay, I did it everybody. There's 10 minutes left on preview day and I made it to hole number eight. We did it everybody. Holy smokes, I am overwhelmed with the amount of floor space and walking I've done today. But here we are. I've nearly done the whole thing. I'm probably gonna come back tomorrow and just touch up some of the spots that I missed. But here we go, Austin van. This is the variant I would get, the panel van, the commercial panel van. Very nice. Okay, that's the cutest bubble car I've seen in a long time. I have no idea what I'm looking at. A Fulda Mobile. Huh, wow. That is wild. That's a jet age almost design. It's like a little bubble of a thing. Tiny little wheels. Look at that. What is that, an eight inch? Holy smokes. Wow. There it is. So it's a 1955 Foldemobile NWF 200. Yeah, Hall 8 is full of micro cars. What's that? Oh wow, we actually had a couple Lloyds in Victoria, BC, my hometown, and here's the club. My dad serviced one at the shop and it was always the weirdest little thing. Or in a Borgward as well. You guys into DAFs? We got the military version, the 1300 Marathon Coupe, DAF 66 Marathon Coupe. There it is. The wing on the back. Okay, okay. Got the military vehicle beside it. All right. Auto Branchi Abart. That's really neat. Look how cute this thing is. Wow, look at that Auto Branchi Abart. It's like a late Italian version of a Mini with a hatchback. Love the two-tone. We got another one here under restoration. This must be the inner fender here. That's a lot of work when you start taking cars apart to this level. I wouldn't recommend it. There's the engine in there. Wow, it's transverse like the Mini too with the, with the transmission right there. Well, the transmission is beside the motor. On the Mini, it's underneath. Holy. So there we go. We got a Melkis. It's a fiberglass special here from East Germany. Looks like it was raced in 1969. Has the gold wing doors. Wow. Well, that's a wrap. 
Techno Classica 2024. What an amazing show. So enormous. So many great British and German cars. And we had such a great time also touring all the e types How great was that? So many. We discovered so many e types Here's one, two, three, and we talked about them. Yeah. Watch my video. Yeah, yeah, I'll put a link in the description below. I think there were four outside bonnet latch cars. Pretty amazing stuff. And All some right. series two cars. Yeah, well that does it for this video. Thanks for watching everybody. See you later. Bye-bye.